Welcome back to our channel, where we unearth the hidden gems and forgotten legends of the automotive world. Today, we're diving into a story that takes us back to the late 1980s, a tale of ambition, innovation, and a car that could have redefined the supercar landscape, the Peugeot Oxia. Conceived at a time when Peugeot was basking in motorsport glory, the Oxia was more than just a concept. It was a glimpse into the future, showcasing technologies and performance that were decades ahead of its time. In an era dominated by the likes of the Ferrari F40 and Porsche 959, the Peugeot Oxia emerged as a technological marvel that could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fastest cars of its time, and even given the later McLaren F1 a run for its money. With over 600 horsepower under its hood, four-wheel drive, and four-wheel steering, the Oxia was not just a concept car, it was Peugeot's bold statement of intent in the supercar arena. But what exactly made the Oxia so special, and why does it remain a tantalizing what could have been story in the automotive world? From its advanced drivetrain to its futuristic cabin filled with tech that was unheard of in the 80s, the Oxia was a car well ahead of its time. Join us as we explore the design, the technology, and the incredible performance of this forgotten mid-engine masterpiece. Buckle up, this is a story of innovation, speed, and a dream that, unfortunately, never made it to the streets. 1988 The forgotten mid-engine Peugeot Oxia concept from 1988 was a car well ahead of its time. Had the French automaker made a production version of the Oxia, it would have been the fastest car in the world, until the McLaren F1 came along. The Peugeot Oxia is a high-performance supercar concept that the French automaker conceived back in the late 80s. It pays homage to the company's past and certainly was a technological revelation well ahead of its time. It was a supercar that would have gone up against cars like the Ferrari F40 and Porsche 959 had it actually gone into production. To put that into perspective, the high-tech Oxia had north of 600 horsepower, along with four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. These specs might seem normal now, but back in the 80s, they were unheard of. Let's dwell a little deeper to find out just what the Oxia was all about. Peugeot earned an exceptional reputation in motorsports during the 1980s. Almost all of their models had one or more sports versions to capitalize on this success. However, the legendary Group B 205 GTI and 405 Mi 16 models, the P88 Le Mans racer that could achieve a top speed of 253 miles per hour. None of these cars, though, satisfied the French automaker's thirst for dominance, and hence, Peugeot embarked on an unprecedented journey the creation of their very own ultimate supercar. The Oxia debuted at the 1988 Paris Motor Show. Even at the time, the Oxia was more than just a concept car or a racing car, as many brilliant designers and engineers referred to it. It was fully functional and the French automaker went to considerable lengths to make it a drivable package. The supercar featured an innovative windshield wiper, but the showstopper feature had to be the onboard computer, which controls all of the car's functions, including a navigation system. Again, these features were well ahead of their time. Gerard Welter developed the bodywork, which is composed of carbon Kevlar and an aluminum alloy chassis. With these space-age materials, the Oxia was fairly light, tipping the scales at 2,998 pounds. Its rims are similar to those that will be fitted to the Sporty Me 16. The hood, meanwhile, is generously hollowed out by photovoltaic cells located at the base of the steeply sloping windshield, while the rear spoiler is a direct extension of the roofline. On either side of the diffuser, there are four discrete exhaust outlets in the back. To be honest, this Peugeot still manages to look modern and wouldn't look out of place outside an upscale restaurant in a big city, even today. I have to admit, I am a fan of the way that the Oxia looks, and the designers hit the nail on the head the first time around. This is where things get really interesting. Step inside the high-tech cabin and you'll be surprised by the level of tech that the Oxia offers. Yes, I admit, at first glance, they might seem dated, but for the 80s, they were revolutionary. For instance, the air conditioning system on the Oxio worked even while the car was stopped, thanks to these photovoltaic cells that we mentioned earlier. That's not all, though. The ancestor of the GPS system was also integrated into the car, with real-time traffic information. 
There was also a state-of-the-art hi-fi system and an electromagnetic control system at the time. In terms of seating, you had a pair of sporty bucket seats, complete with harnesses, to keep both driver and passenger safety in any situation. On the technical front, the notion that the Oxia is powered by the iconic 2.8-liter V6 PRV engine from the P88 may arouse some skepticism. I say this because, in comparison to the V12s from Italian rivals at the time, this engine doesn't seem that impressive. However, this V6 is renowned for being tough and is capable of withstanding even the most extreme performance demands. It produces a whopping 680 horsepower and revs to 8,200 RPM, thanks to two-cylinder heads with a total of 24 valves and two turbos. Underneath, the Oxia features a four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering coupled to a six-speed manual transmission with a twin-disc clutch at twin differentials taken from their Group S and Group B Pikes Peak cars. The entire system, which includes two auto blockers, one in the front and the other in the back, ensures fail-safe handling. This staggering performance allowed this Peugeot to outrun all other Peugeots for this era, with the Oxia reaching speeds of more than 186 miles per hour. Michelin MXX Rubber 235-45-17 up front, 285-40-17 at the rear, helps the car with tremendous traction required for high speeds. Also, the Peugeot Oxia, just like the Porsche 959, is fitted with a tire pressure sensor system. Even with the Peugeot Oxia's proven performance on the track, the French automaker didn't put it into production. However, had they done so, the Oxia would go on to become the fastest car in the world until the McLaren F1 came along in the early 90s. The Oxia, in fact, has to be one of the most significant supercar concepts of all time because it was faster than top drawer supercars of the time, like the Ferrari F40, the Jaguar XJ200, the Bugatti EB110, the Porsche 959, and the Lamborghini Diablo GT. As I mentioned earlier, Peugeot did make two functional specimens of the Oxia. While the first has been lovingly conserved at the Peugeot Museum, the second example sold for over 120,000 euros during an arcurial auction on June 14, 2009, and is located right here in the United States. As far as concepts go, we know for a fact the Peugeot has come up with some truly sensational ones, and with retro mods in trend right now, it would be ideal for the French automaker to finally revive the Oxia name.